Friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you a 10% off at your checkout. No matter how much you order, they have a wide selection of wallpaper. Check it out. Tell them I said hello. Yesterday, I posted a brief video of this finished wall. Now it may look like I'm in a library or perhaps a museum, but, but it's not, it's a residence. And the intricate pattern of millwork here created quite the challenge for me to get the wallpaper into place. And the greatest challenge was not to get the wallpaper into these crevices. That wasn't the challenge. It was keeping the wall covering constituted together. Despite all of these natural slices in the material. When you try to get wallpaper into this area right here, if the wall covering should fall into one of these crevices, it's weak there. It's weak if you're trying to cut over here. Well, the wallpaper wants to cut where the natural crease is, and therefore this made it quite the challenge. And so how do you cut around this molding? How do you do it? I will tell you that what you're looking at took me two and a half hours. This being the easiest and this being the most difficult. This area here and this area down here. Note the space of wallpaper that needed to go there. And I didn't splice it. That's one whole piece. So let's start out with planning the last sheet. Well, the last, this sheet starts right here. This is 54 inch vinyl. And so one of the mistakes you can make when you're new at hanging paper, but you're good at it, but you're still new, is to forget the furthest point on your forward edge. You could mistakenly think it's there or here, when in fact, it's here. You see that? That's a common mistake we as new paper hangers make. You might say, well, I only need 37 inches. No, you need 41. No, you need the whole 52 inches of the strip because your wallpaper goes over here. So you could cut this whole sheet and you end it right here because you forgot that you have to go over to the furthest point. So the first thing we do when we consider the wallpaper that's going against this intricacy is that number one, you want the entire sheet. You don't want it to be a seam here. You don't want that. You want this sheet here to be at least over to here. When you consider the entire wall, however, considering the pattern, you can see that these vertical stripes of alligator directed where those vertical stripes were going to be. So I started in the middle. So my piece starts over the window, somewhere over here. And I brought the paper out. Now the first obstacle has to be handled first. You can't bring it out here and start messing with it down here, 
because you're gonna put undue tension over here and you'll wind up short. So you bring the wallpaper over to here, you cut it. You bring the wallpaper over to here, you cut it here and there. Then you bring the wallpaper over to here and you rip the tension there, get that wallpaper up there and there. When you're sure you have it up against here, you cut it there. And now we begin the vertical descent. Okay? And once you begin the vertical descent, you start considering all of the little parts right here that have to be cut. Okay? And so we all know how to do that, right? But when you come down to this curve, you have to have scissors, you have to have wallpaper shears, and they have to be sharp. And then what you do is you cut the wallpaper here at the fattest point so that you don't run the risk of cutting the wallpaper in the wrong place and falling short here. So you cut it here, then you put your smoother here and you get it in there. And then you come with your scissors and you cut it there. Get it in there. Get your scissors and cut it there. And you see this point here? You push your wallpaper smoother up against there. You make a mark on it with a pencil maybe, and you cut it there. Because you need the wallpaper in there. And then you skip that part and you cut it here. Now you have a barrier. A barrier that isolates the wallpaper that will go in there. And you don't go beyond this fat point. And then you do the same thing. You round the edge, you cut it here, you cut it there so that the wallpaper goes in there. And then you go around all these obstacles, starting with the obstacle that is most protruding toward the meat of the wallpaper. You can always cut more off, you can never add. And so you wanna cut around the obstacles that protrude, this one, this one, this one, this one, and then you can easily fill in. It relieves the tension. When you slice it here, you have wallpaper that goes in here. After you slice it here, then here, it easily falls into place. And then these little intricate areas like here, you put your wallpaper smoother in there or anything else that you can get in there, and then you cut it here. And then you get your smoother in here. It's all, this is all it is. You push it up against these points and then you cut it. And then your wallpaper's in there, do you understand? Okay, if I wanted to cut it around here, I put my smoother here or something hard, cut it right up until the green point where white and green meet. And then you know the rest. You get something small and you get it in there to slice with a very sharp knife. And I'm talking a hobby knife, okay? To get it into these little areas. So if I, would have only, if I only had to do this, what obstacle would be the first cut? Which one? Would it be down here or up here? Neither one. It would be here. You would get your scissors, you would put the wallpaper. You see that? They're all equal, right? But you cut in the middle. You, t you put this up against here so that you know you're not gonna cut beyond this point. You take your scissors and you do this right up until your scissor touches the green thing. And then you do it here, not down here, here. And then down here. And then you work your way in like that. And that's how you do it. And then after you get done, you open a bottle of champagne and you, you have a large glass of bubbly because this is something over which to celebrate. Because if you can do this, you are a wallpaper hanger. If you can do this, you hang wallpaper. You're good at it. And this should be 
your challenge. The wallpaper school, the Spencer Colgan wallpaper school has this in plastic because if you can cut around this thing, you're, you, 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 you get a hundred percent, you pass. You see, if you can get in that, you're good. And that, that's your challenge. When I, when I came to this yesterday, I said, this is the way my crazy mind thinks. Wow, this is a great challenge. That's the way I think. Instead of moaning about it, I said, this is a great challenge. And here's why. This is now memorialized on my YouTube channel. And you can think of me posthumously, years later, for sharing my knowledge with you. When I was in college in Brooklyn in 1987, um, somebody had died and they were awarded something posthumously. And there was a young lady with whom I went to school who spoke about the deceased receiving something posthumously. But she said she will receive the award posthumously. So I looked at my brother Edward and I said, what the heck is she saying? What is she talking about? And he said, I don't know. And I said, what do you mean posthumously? She said, she's, she's dead. She will be receiving the award Oh no, she was going to receive the bachelor's degree, despite the fact that she died about six months prior to graduating. So she said she, the student will receive the bachelor's degree post-humorously. Needless to say, it was somewhat humorous and we did not correct her so that she wouldn't feel sad. But anyway, posthumously is something that takes place after your death, posthumous, P-O-S-T. You can Google the rest. Now, if you should fail at this, don't worry, walk away from the job and do it again the next day. Never the same day. Never the same day. Do you love it? I hope you do. Yeah. Put a little tree there. Put a happy tree there. Don't let a tree be alone. Yeah. Now he has a friend. Did you ever watch Bob Ross? He drew a lake in a barn house once and there was a boat or something and, the, and there was nobody on it, he said. He fell into the lake. I was like, is this guy for real, man? He fell into the lake. Like the guy was gone in the, in the picture. The guy died. I was like, wow, he's trying to be funny. He said he was on the boat, but he's gone. He fell into, no, he said, maybe he fell into the lake. But he didn't say it sadly. Like he was like, he might, he might as well have said, he probably died. Thanks for watching.